outside today for the first portion of our science study video. Some major things that I'm going to try to hit on right now are some of the fifth grade things that we've covered. You know, some of the things that we've learned, we've kind of had to speed through um, due to all of that snow that we've had this year. So I just want to bring up a couple of things. And the first would be just a basic science experiment because I want to come back to the terms, and I know you probably know what they are, independent versus dependent variable. So in math, we knew, we learned that the variable is the thing that is the unknown. Okay, it's the thing that you really get to choose. So the independent and dependent are what I want to bring up, and now I'm going to bring you along with me to show you a few things. So right here, I have placed, let me try to get it into shot, I have placed some flowers into um, a container of water, and as you can notice, it's totally in the shade, okay? Now I'm bringing you over, and now I have a thing of flowers that are totally in the sun, and as you can tell, it's really bright. So based on that, I want to know which ones are going to grow better, okay? So the ones that are in the shade all the time, or the ones that are in the sun the whole time. So I have to identify which, what's my independent variable, what's my dependent variable. These are the terms. So let's think about that for a second. So the independent variable, guys, is the one that you decide. Okay? Somehow find a way to think you decide. How can I think of that? How can I remember that in my mind? Well, the I of independent, I decide. Okay? So I got to decide. So I have a cup of flowers in water in the shade. I have a cup of flowers in the sun, in water, and, and I want to know which one grows most. So science, you know, is all about asking that question like we've been talking about all year and trying to find answers to it. So my independent variable is the one that I get to change, the one that I have an impact on. So what would the independent variable be in this experiment? Yeah, it'd be the amount of sun. Okay, so a couple of independent variables here. We could actually have a few. One could be the amount of sun. Okay. That's one. I got to decide how much sun those flowers get versus the ones that I just showed you in the sun. Another independent variable, another one that you get to choose, could be, and this is kind of the same thing, but the placement of the flowers. Okay, so these flowers over here, I totally put them in the shade. I got to choose that. The ones back here, they're totally in the sun. I also got to choose that. So the independent variable, the I, that's what you determine. And then we have the dependent variable. Well, let me show you something. Kind of going back to our reading strategies we've learned this year, guys. The word depend means if I depend on you to study for your science as so well, um, by Tuesday, that means I really am relying on you to get that done by Tuesday. So a dependent variable is one that depends on the independent variable, the one that you get to choose. So wh what in my experiment is going to depend on how much sunlight I give to flowers? Well, how much do they grow? Or the height? the coloring, different things like that. You know, all of the major things that I'm thinking about in my science experiment, so the dependent variable, it's going to, based on where I put these flowers, it's going to determine how much they grow. You know, my hypothesis would personally be that the ones in the shade on a day like today may actually do better because these ones in the sun are absolutely being baked by the sun and they may not have enough water to survive such an attack like that, you know. So the dependent variable would be either the height and the coloring of the flower. Is it still alive? These depend on where I put the flowers. So we have independent versus dependent. I will give you guys five house points 
if you can design an experiment and tell me where the independent, what your independent, and what your dependent variable would be. There's some great practice on SOL Pass as well as um, on your review quizzes that you've already completed in class on independent and dependent variables. You really want to make sure that you get those down, guys, okay? So that's my one experiment. I'll come back to the flowers and show you actually what happened in a second. And since we're outside, I have a couple of other things that we could actually touch upon really quickly, and that would be vascular versus non-vascular. Do you guys remember how we started to classify plants? And I showed you the celery in the classroom, and I put the food coloring in it, and the food coloring went up through the celery, okay? That was called vascular. How do I remember that? Well, it's kind of like a straw. So the water in a vascular plant goes up through these tissue-like tube structures and it, it delivers water to all parts of the plant, whereas a non-vascular plant lives very close to the ground, okay, and it absorbs water. It doesn't have tube-like structures and I took you out to my car and I showed you that moss. So if you look right over my shoulder at this plant here, okay, that would be a vascular plant because it's absorbing water up through the tube-like structures. or the flowers that I showed you in the two cups, those are also vascular because they're absorbing water through their tube-like structure. So to identify plants, we either call them vascular or non-vascular. And one other area that you may want to get down, you know, we looked at those sample TEI questions that were available on the um, Virginia Department of Education website. We also have the vertebrate, vertebrates versus invertebrates, okay? The vertebrates are the ones with the backbone, okay? How can you remember that? You know, maybe the B can help you to remember backbone, okay? Now, invertebrate kind of has the same thing, but invertebrate has no backbone, okay? How can I remember that? The N, no N. So you definitely want to get down vertebrates and invertebrates. Let me give you guys a couple of examples and just call out, do you think they're vertebrates or invertebrates, you get to decide. A spider, that would be an invertebrate. Good, remember, they have an exoskeleton, they do not have a backbone. How about a human being? Yeah, we're vertebrates because we have a backbone. How about a turtle? A vertebrate, very good. How about a snake? Vertebrate. How about a worm? Good, invertebrate. How about a fish? That'd be a vertebrate. How about a crab? That would be an invertebrate. Remember, a lot of those things that live in the ocean are actually invertebrates. And if you actually think about it as well, remember how I told you only 2% of all living things are actually vertebrates versus 98% of all living things are invertebrates. And I bet you you can name off 10 times more vertebrates than you can invertebrates. But that's just the makeup. So make sure you get these two terms down, guys. Now I'm going to turn you over to the website to a couple of different excellent resources that you can use at home to help you to review for the Science SO. That kind of center around the scientific method and all of those great things that we've been talking about in class. So the first one is this question right here on the screen. Okay, It says, students notice, read along with me, that sugar maple tree leaves change from green to red during the fall months and black oak tree leaves change from green to brown during the same time, the students are making a what? So what I want you to think of right now, you have these four options. They're making an observation, a conclusion, a prediction, or an inference. Think about what each of these things is. So an observation is simply using the five senses, okay? Taste, touch, um, smell, um, and all of the five senses there. You have conclusion, is something that is, is basically when you take that evidence at the end of an experiment, okay, so I'm going to think of this as an ending point, at the end of an experiment and kind of put it together just based on facts, okay. Then you have a prediction, which is basically like a hypothesis. It's a guess of what will happen, okay, so what will happen. And an inference is when you take what you have in your brain, and you take it with what you have in front of you and you come up with some type of statement. So it's basically like your brain plus what you see. 
Okay, so if I look at my scenario presented to me right now, I want you guys to look at this first before I really go over it with you. It says students notice that sugar maple leaf trees change from green to red during the fall months. So students are looking at trees and they see that they change colors during the fall months. And then black oak tree leaves change from green to brown during the same time. So what are they doing here? Are they using their five senses? Are they at the end of an experiment and just taking the facts of what they tested? Are they making an educated guess? Or are they taking something from the brain, taking the facts, and creating a statement? What do you guys think? Think about that for a second. Yeah, they're making an observation. They're taking their five senses and simply making an observation there. Okay. Now they could potentially, you know, be making a prediction or something as well too, but we're not quite sure. Okay. So you can give yourself a quarter of a house point for answering that question. Now what I'm going to have us do is actually switch over to SOL Pass. I have, um, I would consider it a pretty cool tool. And let me actually just close out here of these documents because I think that we have it available here. Yes, I have some questions here and some of these you have already actually seen on our SOL review quizzes. So some of these are, you're gonna be like, hey, I know that, I remember that. But this once again gets to those points. So according to the picture, which of these is an inference rather than an observation? So remember an observation is the five senses. So if I'm using my five senses, this animal has hair. Well, I can see that, that is out. This animal has a tail. I can see that. That is out. This animal is arching its back. Why well, I can see that. That is out. This animal is frightened. Can you see fear, rock stars? No. You might be able to see through facial expressions and whatnot, but you cannot see fear through your five senses. Okay, so that is your inference, okay? Taking what you know, taking what you see, taking what you know in your brain, and creating a statement. Okay, let's go to a couple other questions. Which of these is a conclusion rather than an observation? The bear lives in a cold climate. The bear has big teeth. This bear has black claws. Or this bear has small ears and eyes. So which one is a conclusion rather than an observation? Which of these is a conclusion rather than an observation? So remember, you can really eliminate, guys, the things that are conclusions pretty easily. Those are using the five senses. So it has big teeth. I can see that. Okay, that's out. This bear has black claws. Well, I can see that. That is out. So that's out. That's out. This bear has small ears and eyes. Well, I can see that. So if I look at this, and I don't just want to go with the choice that I didn't cross off, but this bear lives in a cold climate. You have to take the information that you have in order to find that out. Therefore, that is a conclusion. Okay, let's try another one. Based on the picture above, which of these is a conclusion rather than an observation? Good, guys. Yes, this animal is a mammal, okay, because you can see that this animal has hair. That's an observation. This animal is standing. That's an observation. You're using your five senses. This animal has four legs. That's an observation. Once again, using your five senses. This animal is a mammal. That is your conclusion because you have to take all of those things that you see and kind of put them together to create that conclusion. Okay, which of these can be observed in this picture? It looks like maybe we're dealing with a picture of the moon. The moon is circular. Okay, can I observe that from this picture? The moon spins around on its axis. Can I see that fact from this picture? No. So I would immediately cross this one off. I cannot see this moon spinning on its axis, okay? The moon is solid rock. Can I see that from this picture? No, it just looks like somebody colored it in. And the moon has a little air. Can I see that from this picture? No, okay? An observation is simply using your five senses. So from this picture, I can see that the moon is circular. That is what I would go with. Okay, which of, the, which of the following is an observation about grasshoppers that a science class could have made on their nature walk? Okay, so an observation using the five senses. The grasshoppers will live longest in a container filled with plants. Is that an observation? No, that sounds more like part of an experiment. The grasshoppers are green with long back legs and antenna. Did they use their five senses to figure that one out? Potentially. The grasshoppers will probably eat more grass and tree leaves that, why is that one out, guys? Yeah, this word probably. Okay, an observation is five senses. When you're saying a word such as probably, that is getting into a hypothesis or a prediction. And the grasshoppers all hatched from eggs laid the year before. Well, you would have to do some, you would have to do an experiment in order to find that out. 
therefore that would be a conclusion. So your answer, the observation, is the grasshoppers are green with long back legs and antenna. Okay, students notice, keyword underlined, that in the fall, leaves of sugar maple trees turn red, but the leaves, and we just did this one, the students are making a, an observation. Sandy um, grows roses along her walkway. The roses closest to the street had more blooms than the roses close to the house. Which statement is a hypothesis Sandy could make about her roses? So remember, hypothesis. She's making a prediction. Okay. So it says the roses too close to the street had more blooms than the roses close to the house. What's a hypothesis? There were many blooms on the roses near the house and fewer blooms on the roses close to the street. The roses close to the street have more blooms because they receive more sunlight. The roses near the house were taller but had fewer blooms. Or the roses close to the house had fewer blooms and leaves. So what you guys have to think about here is what is a hypothesis about her roses? So the first one is, an, is a conclusion or an observation, okay? Because you're basically saying there were many blooms on the roses near the house and fewer blooms on the roses close to the street. That's basically an observation, so that's how. The roses close to the street have more blooms because they receive more sunlight. Now that word because, rock stars, is very, very important. So we're going to put a mark by that because she's trying to reason here, okay? So she's taking what she sees... We'll see there. The roses near the house were taller but had fewer, fewer blooms. Well, that is an observation. And the roses close to the house had fewer blooms and leaves. So those ones are all observations. So let's see if this is going, if letter B would be our answer, yes. A group of students was preparing an activity to determine whether certain materials were float or sink when placed on water before the experiment started. One student said, I think the sponge will float. This statement was a prediction. Good. Because of the word, I think. Okay. Let's go to another one. Students want to learn more. which of two soils hold more water. They put clay in one bottle and sand in another. Then they put equal amounts of water in the bottles. Some of the water drained into beakers. So look here. This clay, there's the water that drained into the beaker. This sand, a lot more. So which of these is a manipulated, independent variable? Remember, manipulate. If you manipulate something, you change it. We just talked about earlier in the study video how an independent variable is all about you. Okay, that letter I in independent is huge. Okay, you change this. So what did you change in this experiment? The type of soil, the type of beaker, the amount of water, or the number of bottles, that'd be the type of soil. Look at the picture. In one you have clay, in the other you have sand. Okay, three baseball players investigate to see who can throw a baseball the farthest. They mark off an area on the playground for their investigation. Which should they keep constant? Constant means the same. Okay, so which should they not change? Constant is the same. Which are they not going to change? So basically, they're seeing who can throw the ball the farthest. Which should they not change? The height of the players. Well, can they really have an impact on that? No, they would have to go out and find all of these individual people who are the same height. The color of the baseball thrown, is that going to have any impact on the, in their experiment? No. The order in which players throw? Probably not. Or the spot from which players throw? That's going to be huge. If you're trying to see who is going to throw the ball the farthest, you need to keep the spot from where they're throwing the exact same. Okay, what I'm going to do for the rest of these guys is actually not narrate them. I'm going to keep them up on the screen. You can also visit SOL Pass and get into some of these scientific method type questions. They're amazing practice. And then I'm just going to kind of go through them, click in the answer if you would like to see it. And these are good practice um, going off of what I said. We need to know the difference between a conclusion, a prediction, an observation, and an inference. Those are some very, very important skills that we want to have down for the SOL. Okay, now I'm going to take us back to our... Uh, first, I actually want to go through these. So remember, I'm not going to be narrating here. You just go ahead and answer them. Write down your answer. I'll give you a house point for every question from this point forward that you answer. Remember to pause, and then I'll give you the answer. You may want to pause the video.
And for this one, guys, this is one of those, I'm just going to interrupt for this one. This is one of those where you just have to look at the picture. What is being changed? Well, you can see in the first, second, third, and fourth picture that the light bulb has changed positions, okay? We actually did this one before. What is the independent manipulated variable? Well, if you look at the picture, you have a red light, a blue light, and a yellow light, so it would be the color of the light bulb. Okay, guys, now I'm going to take you back to some other questions here um, from the original document that we've been working on. Let me actually open that one up for us. So we, if you want to work on these a little bit more, maybe on SOL Pass, if you still don't have those down. But now we're going to move on to some matter questions, okay? And this is kind of coming into that conversation. These are some things I just want to make sure that you have down. So let's think about the smallest part of matter. We said that you can break down matter to this point. The smallest part of matter that is identifiable as an element is what? So the smallest part of an element is an atom, yes, okay? So element atom, I'm gonna say E, A, the smallest part of an element, Remember all those elements on the periodic table, all of those things that make everything up around us on the periodic table. We have carbon and oxygen, all of those great things. An atom is the smallest part of matter that is identifiable, that can be seen by the human um, eye. Okay. Well, it, now it can with telescopes and whatnot. And then we have all elements are made up of what? All elements are made up of what? And I'm actually going to take you over to a sample page here that I found, guys, where these questions came off of. I think it's just a great way to study. Um, let me go down to the science section. Actually, I think it's up here. Bear with me, guys. There we go. Yes. Math and science. We're going to go to the PDF presentation. Oop, we don't want grade 8. Here it is. So some of these questions I've been pulling off, guys, is these are the things, you know, how we talked about how the state said, oh, you have to work on this. Okay, so the smallest part of matter is identifiable, it, that is identifiable as an element is an atom. All elements are made up of atoms, okay? Those are some very, very important questions. Now, what's the smallest part of a compound? Remember when we take a compound, let me give you an example of a compound. Well, H2O is known as water, right? So that's hydrogen two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. The smallest part of a compound is a molecule. 
that's how we break those down into parts. Okay, so the smallest part of a uh, compound is a molecule. Smallest part of an element identifiable identifiable by a human would be an atom. Okay, I'm going to continue our conversation here. I do want you to focus a little bit of time on cells. You know, we just kind of learned them um, about a month ago kind of review and refresh those different parts. So I have two sample questions that the state has released for us to look at. Number one says, what part of this plant cell is shown at the arrow? And I think this was one on one of our review quizzes. So it's a plant cell because it's in that rectangular fashion, right? And at that arrow would be the cell wall. Okay, and then if you had to label the plant cell structures in the diagram, now remember we said, yes, a plant cell is rectangular and an animal cell is circular, but it's not going to be that perfect rectangle and that perfect circle. You kind of have to differentiate to distinguish in your mind, okay? And there you're going to have these different parts. While the vacuole is that storage space, the chloroplasts are what make the cell green, the nucleus is a control center, and the cytoplasm, remember that was like our um, frosting that is right there as well. And if you actually want to look on SOL Pass, um, a great area to look, let me take you there, under living systems and cells, okay, among the many cool things that you can see here, um, and remember the password is tigers if it ever prompts you. So which of these organisms has cells with a cell wall? Well, you have to look here, a bluebird, a pine tree, a ladybug, or a fox squirrel. Well, it would be the pine tree because everything else is an animal. Okay, and a cell wall is only in the plant cell. Which structure does a plant cell have that an animal cell does not have? Once again, is a cell wall. Okay, which structure surrounds and protects an animal cell? What do you guys think? Well, if an animal cell doesn't have a cell wall, what is its line of protection? Okay, we used the cookie as this when we were making the edible cells that would be the cell membrane okay this is a really nice quiz to kind of help you guys refresh but what you're going to notice on here is actually that many of the questions on here are the very questions that were on your review quiz so you know you may be looking at that and say Mr. Egger what's going on here but that's another great way to study as well would be SOL pass. Now, so cells are covered. We've talked about plants, vascular and non-vascular. You want to make sure you have those down. I talked about those when I was filming the first part of this outside. So you want to make sure you just look at those one last time. Now, the email that was sent to you with all of this study material includes these four study guides. You guys see these right here, study guide number one, study guide number two, three, and four, as well as links to the matter study video from way back in the year, the earth and rock cycle video, and the ocean study video. Now I'm not telling you to watch all of these videos and do all of this work. That's not the intention here guys. Remember how we talked about for a few weeks now you want to look at your review quizzes that you completed in class since April 1st and say okay which one did I kind of do poorly on? Maybe I want to improve my skills with um, electricity or maybe I want to improve my skills here. Those are the things that you want to do. But if you check out these study guides, these are from another district in the state of Virginia. And I, I was looking through them and I said, man, these are actually really, really nice. Okay. Now, there's a lot of jargon on them, a lot of words. But if you get down to the actual content, the areas where they help to review, it's actually really amazing. Okay. They have diagrams, explaining pictures, and different things like that. You know, they kind of brought some of those technology enhanced items in. There's the ocean floor. What do the arrows represent on the map? Well, those would be the currents. Remember the Gulf Stream current we talked about with oceans. We have the rock cycle, the model of the Earth. These are just really, really cool to help you to study. They include um, vocabulary cards, the models of the planets. Those are something you really want to work on if you don't have that down yet. Um, so, and also some scientists you want to look at, okay? So these are some people that um, contributed to... Um, astronomy and to the planets. You have Aristotle who had the Earth-centered view who said the Earth was in the center of the universe and everything revolved around it. You have um, and all, all of these other scientists as well who shared Earth-centered and Sun-centered views and you also have Galileo who proved that the Sun was the center of the universe. Okay, So that's a great area to study as well guys um, that I show you there and each of those is available in this email that I sent you, okay? So I have set you up with so many amazing strategies. If at any time this week 
you're like, Mr. Reichard, I'm not quite sure in, over the next two days, I guess. Mr. Reichard, I'm not quite sure about this concept. Then you need to do one of two things. Number one, okay, I'm going to list these right here for you. You need to email me at this email address that I'm typing on the screen this very minute because you'll be able to get in contact with, with me. I'll be sure to check it every hour or so to make sure that I can answer any questions that you have or you guys, as always, as I tell you, you can give me a call on my cell phone. Here is my number and say, hey, Mr. Eichert, I need a little bit more clarification with the planets, okay? I am here for you. I want you to be successful on Tuesday, but I also want you to get a great night's sleep. I want you to spend time with your families this weekend, and I want you to come with that amazing, effective effort and bear an attitude that I know that you all have. Okay, guys? I'm extremely proud of you. If you went through this video and you made it to the end, you can bring in the secret code on Tuesday, which is I will rock the science SOL, and that is going to be worth 15, 15 house points because I really appreciate you putting the, in the extra effective effort to watch this and to sharpen some of your science skills in the meantime. So I will see you later, Rocks.